Hey everybody, what we're gonna do today is what you've been requesting for a really long time. We are going to make soy milk. And I thought the first time we make soy milk, we do it in the bigger milk makers. All right, so I have an older soy Bella that I've talked about, but I haven't shown you yet. The Mia Mat, which is the larger one that I'm leaning towards right now. So far, I like a lot of the different functions of it. There's not one that's right that I can tell you to get, but you can answer a lot of your own questions. Like, do you wanna make plant-based milk once a week? Do you wanna make it daily? You know, can you drink this much milk? Are you a one person household? Can you drink it in five to six, seven days? Or is it gonna go bad, right? All those are things that are important. There are some other things I'm gonna show you too that are a little different. I think the Mia Mat is most like the Soy Joya and that it has only, the Soy Joya doesn't have a removable like blending cylinder, but this one does. This has three blades. And again, I'm showing you the old <laughs> um, Soy Bella, so it could be a little bit different. So what we have here, is this has a straining container similar to the almond cow. Now this is an older model and I should look it up, but, um, and actually, does it tell me what it is? It is SB 130, but it's an older model. It just has milk, mill, paste and off are the three buttons. So what this means is you don't have to strain, but you do have to, get this on really well. And I brought over the almond cow, which we're not using. And I can tell you why I'm choosing not to put this in the competition. So see, this is similar. And they're pretty similar to the size too. I think the almond cow may be a tiny bit bigger. And I was surprised by that. So the reason we're not gonna make soy milk in the almond cow is because this almond cow doesn't have heat. So I would put the soaked soybeans in here. I would run it through a cycle. I probably would run it through two cycles. The almond cow blends and then stops three times. So it doesn't blend nearly as long as the Mia Mat, just even on its smoothie setting. And then we would take the strained soy milk and we'd heat it on the stove. Soy milk versus like, Nut milks, oat milks, oh, they're so easy to clean up oats, nuts. They just kind of rinse out. Soy has been cooked on and it kind of grabs onto the metal and so you have to scrub it some. So I don't want to scrub this container and then scrub something else too. Now if, if I were going to make tofu or do something else like that, I might make a different decision, but that's why this guy is kind of not playing in this game. <laughs> um, but we'll get to see what it looks like with the strain. And I, I haven't used my Soy Bella in a long time, so I'm not sure how long it's gonna go versus the Mia Mat. The Mia Mat, I think is gonna go for about 30 minutes. Both of them are gonna heat up, blend the soy beans really, really well, and make some soy milk. The other thing is when I was using the Soy Bella before, I found that the milk produced tasted a little green. So I would cook it for 10 minutes on a high pressure in my Instant Pot. I used the Mia Mat in my class last weekend and I was able to not cook it again. So in class, I wasn't worried about cooking it a second time because I was making gravy with that soy milk so it was gonna get cooked but I went ahead and stored the leftovers and I've been making coffees with them and it doesn't have that green, not luscious soy milk taste to it. It had a really delicious taste. These are two bowls of soybeans that are half a cup. The Mio Mat cup is a half a cup. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna strain this water off. And I can take this and sit it right next to it with the cylinder on. So I'm looking in here because like right about there, see those lines? There's a min and a max. 
So I'm going to put the soybeans or I would put the almonds or the oats or anything else that I'm going to use in there first to kind of make sure I don't go over what I need to use. And I'm going to go all the way to the 1300 milliliter line. Now, all I have to do now is I'm going to put the lid on. I am going to plug it in. There's a little plug. Most of the larger ones have plugs like this and you could actually use them. They're the same kind of cord. And then I'm going to press select. You can see the soy milk blinking and then I'm going to press start. It's going to take a little while before it kind of gets going because it's going to heat up first. So let's look at the soy bella. So with this, there's a smaller cup like this that comes with the soy bella where this fits in just like the almond cow. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to strain these beans. I did a half a cup. So we'll just see if, if all this fits. I'm saying we're good to go. So I'm just going to put these in here. And it, there's plenty of room. I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I'm getting all the things. You could even peel the skins off the soybeans if you wanted to, to do that. I'm not wanting to do that. <laughs> and you have to kind of take this. I usually put it in my hand. I see a bean. Bean tried to escape. Let's get that going. And you're going to kind of wiggle this until you can get this here. And then you have to close it really well. So see how it's not coming off? Okay, so we can leave this sit here for a second. Then we're going to look in here. You can see back there we've got the same thing and it's 0.8 liters, 1.3 liters. But I am going to fill it up to 1.3 liters, which is the top part. And so, and then basically we do the same thing. We just come and it sits down pretty much exactly like that. So we plug it in. This lets us know that it's that little thing, it doesn't move with the others like it did on the Mia mat. So we're going to press milk and see how it's not blinking anymore. <laughs> and then we're just going to be waiting. So it's also going to come up and cook and do the things. This is the sound of the soy bella. Like what will happen is it will seem a little disconcerting because it will blend and then it will stop. Okay. The Mayo mat's quieter, you can hear that, but it gets a little bit louder than this as well, especially in the beginning when it's hitting all the beans, like now it's been doing it for a little while. Now it's going up to a little bit different speed. So like all of these cycles have kind of like a computer chip programmed with what it does. Each model is a little bit different. Like the larger models don't really have the same like five minute cycle that the smaller arc mirror and the nutter do. So we always have to look around to see what do we have and how can we use it to make what we want. But it says, um, you know, don't put the head of the machine under water because there's the plug under here. Let the machine cool down for 20 minutes between processes. One of the reasons that's super important, so I told you I made soy milk over the weekend. So I was just gonna go ahead and do soy milk strain it, rinse this out, and then just process it as soy milk again to let it do that heating process, but it, it wasn't going to do anything. So the reason it wouldn't is a safety function to keep it from overheating and burning out your motor. So it's important. So all you have to do is wait another 20, 30 minutes. And we'll, we're going to do a taste test so I can really have a side-by-side -side comparison of is it me that's changed or is it just, you know, I feel like the Mia Mat really makes very fine okara, which is the pulp left over from soy milk. And I feel like it blends longer 
sibilance without seeming kind of crazy. Like this is, it's not like, ah, I can't deal with this. What I would do is actually, if I wasn't talking to you, I'd be in front of my computer, maybe checking my email, or I could read a book and sit outside. So one of the things I like about having a milk maker is that like the Instant Pot and the slow cooker, while you have to be around to do some stuff with it, the main time that it's cooking, you don't have to be around. And I think that that's super helpful. But you can just hear how quiet and solid. And again, I'm gonna look up and see if there's any differences if they added a new blade, because I think this was two blades. Most now are three. Okay, so the soy bella is beeping that it's done. We started this one before <laughs> and it's still going after. So these beep a really long time and you can just unplug it to make it stop. Okay, so all right, while well, this is still going, we'll go ahead and work on this one. So you will want the cup like this because this is gonna be very hot, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is kind of let some of the strain and then I'm just gonna pop it in this cup and it'll sit up if I can remember what, there we go. Extra soy milk will drain in this cup and I can just pull that out. We don't wanna take this cup off until it's not too hot or we're gonna burn ourselves. We have to balance that with the fact the more it dries on, the harder it is to clean. So there's a little bit of that too. I'm just gonna take a fine mesh strainer, just like I always do. You could use a nut milk bag too if you wanted to. And we're gonna find there's not really much okara in here because the okara is in the filter. And so I'm gonna go ahead and, okay. And now the Mio mat stops. So it's probably the Mio mat is about five more minutes, goes longer, but that's what its beep sounds like. Now, you can see that there's some okara in here. Same thing with the almond cow. I think that sometimes you want to still filter things out. So we've got this one. And again, I'm gonna hold this. There's not a lot in here, but there's a little bit. And this just because of this little thing on the bottom, it helps it sit up. Now, we don't have a special cup that comes with the Mia mat, but because it has that grinding cylinder, it's easy to sit up in something like this. So we're gonna do kind of the same thing. There's a little bit around here, but it's not gonna strain out quite the same way. And I want you to notice there's a lot of soy on here. And this is way more than you'd see stuck on there from a different milk. So we're just gonna place that here. Remember this has all its okara in here. And the difference in pouring this through is at some point this may actually back all the way up because of the okara. It's not a big deal, it just means we have to scrape a little bit more, right? And if you look in here, you see there's like a little coating that isn't necessarily there when we're doing um, almond milk or cashew milk or oat milk. And it's just the beaniness of it. And I will say too, the Okara, we'll compare it, is much finer coming out of the Mio Mat so far. And I will go ahead and make that call, even though we haven't taken the Okara out of the filter, the Okara just that we filtered out that slipped through is much less fine. And Okara, you can put in mashed potatoes, you can like make like a little sauce with it. You can do so many things with Okara. It's just 
soybean fiber and protein. So it is a healthy thing. And when you get your soybeans, you either want to get organic ones or at the very least a non-GMO. And you can see, and see, remember this slipped through the filter. See how that's not quite as silky as this. You can tell even just by looking at it. But see how smooth it is? It's very smooth. It really kind of looks like mashed potatoes right now, which I think is delightful. You can put the okara in the freezer or the fridge to use for later. Also on the bottom, see how it's just really fine okara. So I'm going to keep that in the okara pile rather than putting it inside the milk. Here we'll look at it side by side. And this is just some of the okara. We'll have to filter out the rest in a little bit. But, I mean, it's not a lot of difference. It's just that is smoother than that. That's all. So one of my things that I really wanted to make sure to try is to taste these. I'm going to smell. It still smells a little bit beany to me. This smells less beany. This is the same batch of beans soaked exactly the same amount of time, the same amount, possibly different amounts of water, but looks pretty close. Okay. So I'm going to try the Mio Mat, and I'm just taking a little taste. It definitely doesn't have that taste that I felt like it had before. If you taste this and you're like, it's a little strong, it tastes a little beany or a little bit green is what it kind of is, tastes like to me, then all you have to do is put it for like five or 10 minutes on the stove or in the Instant Pot. It is extra cooking or I could wait, rinse all this off, clean it. I have to do more than rinse off because it's soy. Now I'm gonna try the Soy Bella. The difference is very slight. This I'm going to cook again. It's not so much that if I needed my coffee right now that I wouldn't put it in, but I think that cooking it in the, like 10 minutes in the Instant Pot will be well worth it. Um, and probably what I'm going to do is cook both of them just to see. And you will get, you can see a little bit on the top here, like Sometimes, like this is um, a thickened part. See there? And it's just Yuba. You can actually heat this up on the stove and make Yuba sheets, see? So either you can take it out, they're delicious, or you can just stir it back in and it will kind of melt into the soy milk that's warm. Grab an Instant Pot. This was my soy bella milk. And I'm probably just gonna go ahead and heat both of them, because why not? But like I said, this heating step, it doesn't make it do anything except make it a little tastier for what we're doing right now. So we're gonna put the lid on, and this is the, like the Instant Pot Pro, even though it's the Duo Evo Plus. I'm going to come over here to pressure cook. I am going to set it probably five minutes is enough, but since I'm doing it, I'm going to go ahead and just put it to 10 and I'm going to press start. When it's done, I could choose to go ahead and strain it again or not. Uh, you can take any non-dairy milk after you make it and it cools down, which would be if it's soy or something that you're cooking, you can put it in ice cube trays, put it in a bag, and then just pull it out. Plop some in your coffee, put some in your soups and stews to make it creamy. So if you don't have room in the fridge, or maybe you have some almonds or cashews or even soybeans that are about to either get out of date or 
you're just like, uh, I think that they're getting a little bit old. I need to go ahead and make this, but I might not drink or eat all of it. Freezer, ice cube trays, it's your friend. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, this is the Mia mat. And I want you to see a couple things. See how this doesn't just rinse off? <laughs> Soybean likes to stick, like I am for real scrubbing. And I'm gonna have to scrub well. Because look, that was medium scrubbing and there's still some left. And we're gonna have to kind of continue that all the way around. And then even after that, we're going to take off the grinding cylinder because there's going to be stuff under there too. We just want to make sure we don't get any liquid or water into where that plugs in to the bottom part. So we still can go around these edges. And you still can put water right on this, just not on that part, right? Okay, so it looks pretty clean until we look in here, right? See? So I'm going to do this part. And you really need to use a scrub brush. They're, they all come with them. So these are all from ver of the various milk making machines, except for this one is for the almond cow um container that i use but this can be really helpful now this is pretty soft and some of these oxo brushes are harder so i find that these harder brushes and see i never have to fool with any of that except for when i do soy And the reason I want to be so explicit about this is not to tell you not to make soy, but if you're like, this is too much for me, I'm never going to really do that. It doesn't mean you can't use a milk maker. It just means maybe making soy milk isn't for you. And this isn't as bad to me as cleaning out a juicer, but you may feel differently. stuff sticks on right at the very base and I'm even going to use this little guy to try and get some of that and then we can use the cleaning cycle if we feel like we still need to and see, like, that is plastic, but around this very bottom is soy gunk. Okay. And I feel like that's pretty daggone good. And then I put this on so that I can just sit it in the sink. Standing up. Let's get the body. And we're going to see that same kind of hanging on gunk. And again, this is here, and here is where you don't want to get any water. So we'll rinse it out a little bit, and we'll take a look. Some of it is rinsing out, but I want you to see, see a little bit of that layer sticks? That is the soy. <laughs> and on the bottom, you can see that it's got some. So I have to scrub the bottom real good and make sure I go all the way around. Let's rinse it and let's see if we need to do it again. Because of the stickiness of soy, the longer you wait, the harder it's going to be. And see, there's still some in the bottom. So I'm going to go around there a little bit. Let's say you forgot, or you had to leave the house, and everything's kind of on there really hard. What I would do is then go ahead and fill it up with hot soapy water, 
put the top on, and by fill up, I mean to just below the minimum line, <laughs> because when we don't have something thicker, it can overflow easier. And then if you can put it on a cleaning cycle and wait for that, great. If not, just leave it soaking. And as soon as you can come back, do a cleaning cycle and then do what you just saw me do. Okay, so I think now we'll look at doing some of that with the soy bella. So let's take the base first and let's take a look at it. And I found, and I when I was using this, I was using it almost exclusively for soy milk. So if I just kind of rinse, and again, you can find that spot or spots that you know. <laughs> you see how nothing's really rinsing out well. There's a lot in the bottom. So I'm just going to scrub. And I also find whatever side is like the hidden side for me, I'm going to find a bunch so I move it. And that just saves time with me looking for it later. <laughs> um, I can already see that there's some right here where I poured it. And there's more down in here into the sides. I don't know if this one is harder to clean. It's, it's thinner metal. It's still stainless steel. So I don't know if it's just because it's older. Maybe stainless steel is a little bit different, but I don't think it is. Or if it's because it's what's burned on in the bottom is pretty fine Okara. I still have, see where my spots are up here? And there's still some more. That's pretty good. See, one more spot over here. I'm going to try and use the brush real good. So having some of these brushes is kind of nice. Okay, so I think that's pretty daggone good. I'm gonna put that down in the sink. It's still pretty warm, so I'm gonna use the pot holder. And this is the Okara. And you can see that it's way coarser than this. So this Okara versus this Okara. So it's much thicker. It, it's not good or bad, it just is what it is. So I'm gonna put this in the strainer because I might use it for two separate purposes. The more I get out, the less I have to clean. And like I said, I really probably should have waited till this was a little bit cooler. <laughs> but I am impatient. And I'm gonna get this Okara off of here. And I did look up the Soy Bella, like the new one, and it has two buttons. And see, it comes off the plastic easier, but I'm still gonna scrub it some. And the new model does just have two blades. It doesn't have three, because I wanted to just check it out. I've had mine for a long time. Now, I will say that this gets super nasty on here too, and there is some plastic. I'll have to look You really have to get on in here. I hate that those screws are there, but they are. And so you kind of have to clean those, clean that, the shaft that the blade is on really good. So having a little brush is well worth it. This wasn't that bad. Although I'm still gonna feel around here to see if I've missed anything. But that's pretty, you can tell that that's real shiny now. All right, so that 
that's all there is to cleaning it. So it's not that big a deal. And what I would say is if you want to reuse your Okara for things really easily, like maybe adding bulk to mashed potatoes or mashed turnips or a soup, or I think I'm going to try and make some sort of cheesy recipe with maybe like a cheese spread with the, the Okara from the Mia Man. I could also take the Okara from the Soy Bella, put it in a blender with all my other ingredients and blend it until it's as smooth as that. And Fergus is coming to say hi. I thought I resumed and I cleaned a whole bunch of stuff like um, a fine mesh strainer and the strainer in the, uh, in the Soy Bella, but I did film it. Can't make it dirty again right now, but what I can do is say, I think it's harder to clean the Soy Bella filter that goes on that's similar to the almond cow one. It has a little bit larger holes than this. And I feel like some pieces get stuck in there. Like I'm using all these different brushes to try and get it out. When I use a fine mesh strainer, it takes a quarter of the time. So that's why I prefer right now the Mia Matte doing it with just the fine mesh strainer. I just feel like the cleanup is a little bit better. And again, if you are looking for cleanup that's not this tough, because this is the worst case scenario. Right now, I don't know of anything that's more worst case scenario than soy, just because the Okara and the pulp stick so much, um, is I would say use cashew, use oats. That almost completely rinses out without any effort. You don't have to scrub around the bottom of the blades the same way or do any of that. But this gives you an idea. I feel like right now, soy milk is a little harder to find than it used to be. And I feel like it's getting more expensive. And it's also harder to find, like or, the organic silk that I was using. This is cheaper. It has less ingredients and it's just pretty easy to use. So that was this going off. So let's go ahead and we're gonna not just release the pressure like whoop, because it's liquid and that can come up and make a mess for me. So I'm gonna let it go just a little bit. And that's just the warm soy milk. One of the reasons it's boiling a little bit is because I released the pressure manually instead of naturally so it did raise the heat and that's great it doesn't it has a very neutral taste no beanie at all i will say again with the mia mat i felt like it was close enough that i would use it without doing this you don't have to feel that way it's okay to go ahead and do this for a little bit right it's not that big a deal okay let's go ahead and just see if there's anything else for us to filter out too, because that'll be helpful. And there'll probably be a little bit, there shouldn't be too terribly much. And actually I feel like there's a piece of Yuba happening from where it's so warm. Now it also means doing this, means that you have the soy gunk all over here. And that's another thing to clean, just like another pot, another pan. So I'm going to go and immediately soak this and put a little detergent in there so that nothing dries and it's easier to clean. But for real, <laughs> it's real that soy sticks to everything. Like you have probably haven't seen many things stick like that to your Instant Pot either. So see, there's actually a good bit of Okara still in here. And it never hurts to go ahead and strain more than once. It just depends on what your personal preference is. And this is two batches of soy milk. So you might only get a tablespoon out of it. But like I said, this is really good. You can put it in burger patties. You can do so many lovely things with it. So what I'm gonna do, and you can even do this if you want. Usually when I, this is the almond cow. 
container, but you can get a generic one with a handle. I really like this. This one also has a silicone covered wood cap. So it's real easy to shake it up really good because no matter what you do, it's gonna separate. And the thing is, what you're using in the carton separates more than you think it does too because you can't see it. So this is awesome. So with any nut milk, soy milk, any of that, I get a nice funnel. I have a bar strainer and then I'll strain it through again. Now with this being so hot, I don't want to put it in a glass container. So I'm going to do it later. But this just gives you a really good idea of the whole process of soy milk start to finish. You want to have the beans soak at least overnight. And then like we did to get rid of that water and get fresh water to blend it with. It's super easy. I did this with a half a cup of soy. With either one, I could have used more soy beans. I don't know that I could have gone much more than another two tablespoons in the Soy Bella. One of the reasons some of my students like the Soy Joya, which I compare to <laughs> the Neomat because it has a, it doesn't have a removable grinder, but it has a little thing. And you can add more soybeans, nuts, grains, into it to make a richer milk. The higher the ratio is between the milk ingredient and the water, the thicker, richer it is. So I like to think of it like thinner is more like skim milk. The thickest would be like heavy cream and anywhere in between. So that's a mouthfeel. And it's also harder to strain. It takes more time if you're using a higher ratio of soybeans to water but that would mean that this we can make a richer soy milk that would make a really good tofu um, and things like that so that could be a reason why you might want to do that you might be like i love to skim milk before i went vegan so this is too thick for me so then try a quarter cup of soybeans one of the best things about making your own milk at home is you get to use the ingredients you want to use you get to add in anything you want. Like we could, this is plain soy milk. I could go ahead and add vanilla and some date syrup or date paste and um, vanilla powder. I can make this chocolate soy milk. I can sweeten it with anything I want, flavor it with anything I want, and it won't have anything weird in it. I'm not using an ingredient to make it whiter like some of the milks do. I'm not using ingredients to thicken it like, um, carrageenan or zangam gum or something like that but you can if you want to and you can make it as thin or as thick and rich as you want it it's beautiful and you're really not going to find exactly the milk that's perfect for you but you certainly can make it so i hope you enjoy it